Hi guys! Good morning, good afternoon. I guess it's afternoon now for like everyone. I feel like it's morning though because I'm tired today. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, Gun and I are going to chill today, cast a little bit of uh, CCL matches here. I've never actually co-streamed CCL. I think I've signed up most seasons and then I just don't actually do it. I just end up curling up on the couch and watching the games instead. But... Um, I'm a little bit hyped for our team this season. I, I had a, little, a lot more hands-on uh, with forming this roster this season and getting it all sorted, so I'm excited to see them play today. Um, Goon, yeah. how's your day going? What do you? What's it's your thoughts on the, the game so far today? I, you know, like, I, I honestly had 30k, spoiler alert, mm. I had 30k winning 3-0 against Storm. Yeah. For them to go 3-1 and potentially, like, there was a there was a very very real possibility that uh, Storm could have taken that that tower yeah, to, yeah. to go to game five. Hey, shout out to Storm for, I, for uh, showing up. I wonder how much of that is like potentially thirty k messing with some rules and and people playing heroes there, mm. them getting a game in and taking towers of doom you know as long as it did um because cure wasn't typically like he wasn't playing the things we typically see him on you know, there's no zara tool no my evs no melee heroes he was playing like ranged assassins which is not usually what we see him on so maybe they were experimenting with a team they felt they could do that with the one they weren't as worried about losing against i don't know yeah well i mean cure's playing he's the flex yeah range player of the season right he's on the off lane so uh maybe there was a little bit of um of experimentation. Oh, we can take a look at the Simplicity team right now because they're showing that real quickly. If it's going right. to show. Hang on. doesn't want to show. And I don't know why. Hang on, guys. Let me see if I can get this working. Elise, let me check and see if I got the clean feed working because it was working a second ago. Well, that's working. So I guess that's good. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why the stream won't show, though. Let me see if I can fix it. Pop on over to Goon and I while I'm getting that sorted, though. I was sitting here testing it the entire time that they were playing their first series to make sure that it would work when I streamed. And, of course, now it's like, <laughs> not working anymore. Um, but, uh, no, I mean, I don't know how much you guys have been tuning in and checking out the Wild Heart roster, but we kept a few of our players. Weary, Mason, and Zergling returned this season. Um, Ivy Tangs joined us. He was on Storm last season. And then we've got a couple brand new players um, t new to CCL coming in with Haven taking the tank role and Roger coming from our academy team as our sixth player. Yeah, I'm really excited about this um, for sure. Uh, Roger, Latam player, uh, came from Wild Heart Omega as well. Uh, very, very skilled player, talented player. Has had a lot of experience actually playing with uh, Mason, for example, mm -hmm. uh, as one of his teammates, and more recently with Zergling and uh, Weary Date and, and NGS. Haven. I'm 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 very very curious and, and excited about as well because obviously we lost Tremor. Yeah. Who, um, there's a lot of synergy there that that we lost between the the team and a lot of the skill, a lot of talent. Um, but Haven seems to kind of like fit a very similar play style and vibe it, it, or play style so, and and just obviously the role that Tremor filled. I would uh, say vibe. For, and vibe? I would say, say vibe. vibe. No, I wouldn't say play style necessarily. I think um, okay. Haven is a much safer tank player than than Tremors. Okay. This is a, a conversation that they were having the other day. Is that there's, um, you know, they they don't need to worry as much about dumping resources into their tank player when Haven's playing as they did when they played with Tremor because he does play a little bit safer. Okay. Um, it, again, depends on the, the comps and the roster and who they're playing and, and what they're trying to, to, to accomplish with their draft. But um, yeah, I, I, I don't think they do have the same play style, which does take a bit of adjusting for our, our returning members, especially that already have kind of some synergy going. Uh, let's take a look at the map bands and picks here. Hopefully I got this working. Yay! Okay, good. We are good to go. Um, but we do have Battlefield of Eternity getting banned out by Simplicity Wild Hearts, taking away Cursed Hollow, and we're kicking things off on Sky Temple. Uh, this is a map pick from Simplicity. Wild Heart got the first pick, so... Whew! A Sky Temple game is not usually where we see things go. Pop back on over here, but what are your thoughts for Sky Temple? Like, I don't even know that I see teams scrim on this map very often. Like, that's how little it's played. Yeah, um, you know, 
for this particular match, the series between us and Simplicity, um, Simplicity is picking it. Obviously, they're they're they, it's something that they are maybe comfortable with. Yeah. Whether through Storm League or maybe a couple of scrims, um, but I think that ultimately at the end of the day, the experience that our guys have is probably gonna outshine uh, Simplicity. I. It's a weird map. It's a weird map. A lot of people don't like it because of how the objective works, because of um, how the objective directly hits buildings. Play for the objective, you just win the game. Um, and there's not too much wiggle room outside of mm. that. We um, are going to get into the draft here. Uh, I think, y'all, like, if Simplicity is going to take a game from us, it's probably going to be going to a weird map that we're not as comfortable on. We don't as scrim, scrim as often on. Um, yeah. And not because they're like out, not because they're out playing us, you know. <laughs> because they're well, putting us somewhere uncomfortable. Yeah, you see the junk rat band coming out, you know, from from simplicity. That don't, don't want us to, to play. Uh, junk rat, pretty strong hero uh, overall, just in general, um, especially on this map as well. He can rotate through, helps defend some pushes, can set up plays. Good boss fight, good point fight control with the rip tire and whatnot mm -hmm. support support three supports being banned out here by the so brightwing and regar um are oh my gosh are two fantastic uh flexible support heroes that uh most most teams and players will depend on will rely on and considering that uh a lot of the players from simplicity are playing from korea there's a ping difference there's a ping difference and these two heroes those two supports definitely allow you to play around the ping the ping we see the sylvanas mm -hmm. coming out flexible hero good push good team fight potential and then we got the false set and the hogger i think uh People don't realize Sylv's strengths these days. She's in a good spot. You know, the other thing, too, with all these healers banned out, these are a lot of healers that have those cleanses and the ability to save teams. So we could be uh, potentially seeing things that uh, that can kind of punish that. Maybe a Chromie with the temporal loop are very hard, heavy CC teams. We've got the Anu and Blaze pick up here by Wildheart. Which, that's on Zergling's Blaze. Just a Nubarak ban, you know, hard CC on that hero. You don't have a cleanse on the other side, so it makes some sense. I wonder if they'll probably just ban out. Can you just ban out another support here if you wanted to, or you can just ban out a tank? Probably like Johanna, or uh, you could ban out. Uh, yeah, you're gonna I, go Nara like if you're gonna go for another ban on a healer, like what's left, Stukov. Yeah. Yeah. Is that or like Deckard? Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, the the support bands coming out super three support bands from Wildheart, mm -hmm. like straight up. I'm not Korean. Okay. Chat's asking, is this an all Korean roster minus Porky for simplicity? Uh, yeah, I believe so, right? Uh, pretty much. Their six man is Slips. He is. Yes. A... Yeah. I like the, the trade-off between Hogger and Blaze here as well, because um, on Sky Temple, that top Bruiser camp is always going to be something that you can look at getting, and both those heroes are quite capable of taking it on their own. They're not going to need the help of their teammates to just you know leave the lane for a minute, go grab that camp, get back to soaking, and they can both clear it out. If one team had Hogger and the other team didn't get the Blaze or vice versa, kind of going to be left with like a, a bit of an uneven matchup in that top lane. Uh Tracer I would like to see Diablo. some more. I would like to see some more wave clear here from Simplicity. Um, I mean, our, Wild Hearts wave clear isn't like super great either. However, they do have a lot of pick potential with this Diablo and this Tracer. I'm excited to see a Haven Diablo. <laughs> I like watching his Diablo. I think it's really cool. It's really fun. Tychus coming out, but um, does Anduin enable Tracer enough to get in there and do her job? Oh yeah, light bomb yeah. the tracers. Pretty, yeah. Pretty <laughs> yeah, light bomb tracer onto a Malfurion who can't cleanse himself onto the false stat. You got the Sylvanas that can get back there as well with a haunting wave, Diablo chart. Like, there's a lot of kill threat, a lot mm -hmm. of kill threat for sure. Um, it's really hard to play a Malfurion without having some kind of ability to keep him safe, whether that's like a bunker or a Vadiv shield or just 
enough front line to kind of protect the, the area around him. Um, so he can't cleanse himself unless it's a root or a slow, right? So if you got him to CC'd with stuns, he's probably going to die. Mm. Now, we've got the draft all, all sorted out here. Um, do you think Wilder has this? Yeah, I, I like the false side, the Tychus pickup over on the side of Simplicity. Uh, you know, Sky Temple, we might be getting into late game here with the upgraded Gust. There's always a potential for big plays to be made. Tychus provides that Odin, which is really great zone control on objective. I'm going to get into the game right now. Of course, Wild Heart has this. What are you talking about? <laughs> this is a Wild Heart stream, by the way. Super so, biased. <laughs> extremely biased. All right. It's going to be, first, it's going to be amazing casting, and it's going to be super biased. So, hey, you're here for the Wild Heart show. I keep forgetting that I don't have to do Observer <laughs> stuff. I just get to sit back it's and great. watch. Yeah. <laughs> I know. I was just thinking about that. I'm like, this is awesome. You know, it's hey, good. the. It's good, but on one hand, I, I don't get to cheat and hover talent names and stuff. <laughs> it's just going to be pure from memory here, but we are going to see Wildheart kind of starting out split in their lanes here. It looks like uh, they want to use that still maybe get a little bit of push in bottom if they can sneak it in here. Yeah. That Brightwing being off the table allows this Tracer to kind of be able to run around and exist. Um, that point, it clicks CC isn't around. To, and also kind of deny potentially some pick plays. Uh, pretty pretty heads up draft uh, and banning from from Wild Heart. I'm curious to see like Porky on the tank on the main tank role with four other Koreans that have to kind of like respond to what he's doing. Yeah. I'm I'm paying attention to see what that looks like. Yeah, I mean, we have Haven on the Korean ping as well, and just having one player having to deal with that ping really limits your draft. So I can't imagine having four players that you have wow. to limit your draft around. This is crazy. They're going to go for a first blood here. Tyke is getting that bomb from Tracer, and down he goes. There we go. Wildheart taking first blood of the game. Let's see if they can get a little more. That was a, a minute in, and Pulse Bomb was already up. What? Mm -hmm. What the heck? I'm, I'm trying to hover the talent right now, and I'm you just the can't. Clean feed. I can't. I can't. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Wildheart's gonna get rewarded here with that invade onto the siege camp after that pick onto Tychus. They're walking away now and starting up their siege camp. Hogger, in the meantime, he's up on that bruiser camp. So convenient that the clean feed just switched straight to Hogger when I was talking to him. It's like they can hear me. Um, they're going to get that out. The The thing of this map in particular, that Bruiser Camp becomes really important in this early game because if you get it out early enough, it's up again before second objective. But in addition to that, if you really push it forward, you can get some nice structure damage in that top fort, prioritize top objective. And now you've got a whole fort down in the early game with those periodic katas to continually create pressure up there. Hey, and you got to kill buildings to win the game. So yes. if you can do that, especially early on, mm -hmm. you're in a good spot, 100%. So I like Simplicity's pickup on this Bruiser camp at this point. I'd like to see them push in and try to get some value out of it. I would have liked to see our guys pick up our Bruiser camp by this point as well, but they're getting some value out of the Siege Giants in bottom. Our Bruiser tank is pretty slow. Mm -hmm. um, I will say Simplicity's Siege damage isn't the greatest. You know, no. your, your two damage dealers are Tychus and Falsa, so you take the camp and then, you know, you kind of, sure, you push a wave out, maybe you get a little bit of damage on the wall. But at this timing here with this Bruiser camp is actually excellent with the objective. And then also now, Simplicity's going to have a hard time clearing that. Yeah, really until Odin is online, their siege potential is a little subpar here. So we'll see <laughs> what Wildheart can do with this Bruiser camp. If they're going to play around top objective here, Mason's going in for a little bit of damage on the Hogger. Um, and False has just staying soaking that bottom. He's their global. He can kind of catch that soak, join the fight when needed, maybe catch Wildheart off guard a little bit with a 5v4. Yeah, Simplicity is going to be stuck clearing this, and the objective is just going to yeah, be ours. This is so good for Wildheart. Not only are we getting top objected right now, we're getting that mid one as well. Tracer sitting on that, stealing a few shots. She's going to walk away from that right now. The rotation from False Ad and Hogger. We're still sitting on top, and that Bruiser camp still pushing forward. Give up a couple shots or take a couple shots pretty cheeky. Mason mm -hmm. Blaze looking sharking around. Wants to find Apto here on the follow stat. Does he finds the pulse bomb, but it's not gonna kill just yet. Oh, you must be slightly ahead here. Oh. <laughs> You're saying pulse bomb came out and then like it wasn't quite out yet and it just came out. What's your in-game timer? Uh 355. 
Okay, what about now? Three, four. <laughs> 404? Five? Uh, yeah. Okay, cool. Maybe right, it's like this is a split <laughs> second. <laughs> okay. All right, we're good. We're good. We're good. All right. Uh, mid temple completed there. Uh, we got to clean up the top top lane and recapture top uh, top objective. We're playing it slow, trying to get the XP advantage. We're actually underneath the four here. Using mm -hmm. the uh, ooh, nice little slice set from Ivy. He's seen that move from Porky a few too many times in Star League. Who knows what's up? I'm gonna see Tychus getting caught out once again here. Those last few shots going over into the fort of Wildheart, but it's still standing. All forts mm -hmm. really still standing on this map. Wildheart, though, getting a little bit more damage out onto Simplicity structures here. They use that Sylvanas in mid to help out a bit. Siege camps I'll back up. Let's see if they go for an invade. I like the way Haven is playing these rotations. He's kind of just like in the bushes, kind of yes. just being annoying, just being disruptive and trying. Even if you're not finding the kill with these shadow charges, you're at least instilling enough fear into your opponents yeah. that you're gonna they're gonna they're gonna respect that. They're gonna back up and take the safe option. Give yourself and your team some space and move around the map. Yeah. They're gonna get that siege camp here. They're well on their way to level tens as well on the side of Wildheart. They're gonna hit it well before Simplicity, so maybe they can look to force something after uh, ultimates are online here. We're gonna see Sylvanas like and Blaze head top. Hopefully yep. get a bit of pressure in that top lane. And Mason's acting as anchor, keeping an eye on any rotations that might be happening. Just got a little catch of Hogger there. He's going back to uh, the lanes. Just moving around the map. Mm -hmm. Keep him moving, keep him moving. Sylvanas, very powerful. Able to just kind of create these these opportunities from nothing, essentially. Yeah, Ooh. nice dodge on that fall stat damage there from <laughs> Ivy on the way oh, out. Man. This is great. They get the fly out of fall stat. Next objective is going to be up soon. That means he he he's not going to be able to fly in anytime soon to join any of these fights. And they're just kind of playing very reactionary to Wildheart. You know, you see Sylvan is kind of running all over the map, map creating pressure on these forts. And all that uh, Simplicity is really doing is running there to meet Sylvanas after she's done. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it, it's it's you know the wave clear on the blaze and on, on the Sylvanas is actually it's pretty impressive here. Mm -hmm. Your your wave clear on Simplicity is is Hogger, but Hogger wants to be able to take camps. But then who's holding the lanes? Is it False Set and Ty Ooh, nice mind control here on the False Set. Actually, we got the Pulse Bomb and the Light Bomb as well. The double bomb combo, double fisting those bombs. Find the pick, get the four, and uh, now they're gonna go down for the bottom objective. Now, I will say, like I was saying earlier, with Simplicity taking their Bruiser Cramp so early, they do have it out for this objective. Oh. So Hogger is going to push top during this fight, but this objective is going to go over to Wildheart for the most part. And they've already got that mid fort down. They can now look to pressure bottom fort. So, you know, it's almost a two for one trade on forts at this point if they do want to give top. But Sylvanas is going to head up there. She's clearing that up, leaving the rest of the team down below to deal with objective. Yeah. Before that, I mean, Sylvanas went up there mid, was pushing a little bit. There's a fly actually happening up on that top side. Yeah. They're looking to kind of create some pressure. But yeah, got some scrapping around down here on the bottom side instead. Too bad the observer can't hear what we're talking about and get the cue to go move the camera. <laughs> <laughs> top fort is going to go down. Sylvanas is backing away, and there's the engage on to Murden. Lightning breath out from the Diablo. They're going to find themselves that kill onto Murden. Wishing getting in some trouble here as well. The fort goes down. Oh, nice jet propulsion out from Zergling. They're going in, looking for more here. They find Dual and down goes Amalfurion as well. A three for nothing here in favor of Wildheart. They're just gonna go for the boss here. You know, Falstead and Hogger just kind of up here being annoying, but I don't think this is worth it any of that like okay cool you've kind of created some split math pressure but you're two levels down your team mm -hmm. is dead you're about to lose a boss that's yeah. going to push down on the keep side uh, you know it's 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 brutal yeah out of all of that i mean wildheart lost a camp and a fort but they got way more they got the boss they got mid fort yeah. they got bottom fort they got three kills like this is a trade they'll make any day oh Haven looking going for in Berber. Here. There's the mind control out on a hogger. Absolutely deleted there. <laughs> Ooh, uh, let's go. Ivy let's is just look. making the plays with these mind controls today. I could just hear Haven in my head and comms. Go, go, go. 
<laughs> boom, boom, <laughs> right? Boom, somebody dies. <laughs> Chat saying go, go, Haven, and Haven is actually a genius. <laughs> <laughs> I'm excited. And it's so funny because we're going to give some insight here. Uh, we're really worried about losing Tremor, right? And, and the mm -hmm. tank pool was pretty, pretty shallow. Um, well, it's no, and it's no secret mm -hmm. like every most of the players that were wanting to play in CCL went ahead and kind of made their own teams which meant that you know any any tanks were were already a hot commodity there's not very many of them and any of the good ones yeah. made teams with these players that were great players so our options were very limited we we had to look at new talent for the tank role yeah, yeah, and Haven made a splash in HRCS. I think it was Weary Day that had made a comment about him. Right now, as we're about to gas him up, hopefully he doesn't run it down too hard. Nice pull there from Weary Day, Ooh. the guy that I was just talking about. We got the light bomb as well. Ooh, doesn't land, but it's okay though. We're good. We're good. Uh, it's the uh, that's the Pau Gasol and Kobe Bryant duo right there, uh, <laughs> the Weary Day Haven. Anyways, but yeah, so like Haven kind of you know pleasantly surprised us. Came up, performed well, and we were like. Man, you can't write a better love story. This is great. Let's mm -hmm. run with it, and and it's been it's been awesome. I like IB here, split pushing, forcing that response from Paul's dad. Well, yeah. Here's the thing too. Right now, Wild Heart 16s, they're up structures. So simplicity, as as sh unfortunate as it is, they kind of just have to trade out where they can. But this is only going to put them further and further behind. Look, their mid keep goes down off of that, and now here comes Wild Heart zergling in on the flank. IB, there he's going to use those uh. Banshees to walk in. The oh. mind control comes out, but it does not connect. They're not going to find what they're looking for here. Nobody likes to fight on this bridge of death, so we're going to see Wildheart back up. Yeah, a little, you know, some, some missed skill shots there. Look good, though. It was going to happen. It'll happen. A couple more, a couple more rounds of that, and they'll be landing those and mm -hmm. every single time. Well, there's still uh, mind control is the only alt that went out here, so they're still feeling pretty good. And mind control, pretty oh, low yeah, cooldown. It's, it's up again in 12 seconds. They're gonna go for this bruiser camp invade. Might even look to pressure in on this top keep off of that as well. I like it. Bruiser camp and the Savannas create a lot of map pressure from nothing. This hero being able to shut down buildings, pretty good. Ah, there we go. Tower Odin. shut down. Here's Odin out on the Tychus. He's going to clear up what's left of this camp. And Wildheart, you know, right now they're so far ahead in XP, they can just walk away. They don't need to force anything, but they still have those 16s, all their ultimates up if they want to take a fight oh. right now. There goes the mind control. It just connects onto the Tychus. Here's the follow up. Let's see if they can get the kill. Light bomb comes out and down goes the Tychus. Haven looking for a little bit more. Porky's going to be rooted by the Anduin. See if they can turn it back around here, find anything else, or if they're just going to walk away with that one kill onto Tychus. Seems to be the plan here for Wildheart. And, you know, we were just talking about Haven and gassing them up, but let, IB Tings is another excellent mm -hmm. pickup for us. You know, he had his season on, on Storm. Wasn't, you know, was considering not playing anymore uh, as well, kind of taking a break, but he has been a great addition to our team. A great comms, great attitude. And very, very skilled player. He keeps that uh, Canadian ratio we like to go for. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the three to one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, for those of you that don't know, there's only one American on our team this season. We have three Canadians, an American, a Korean, and we have Roger. Where, where's Roger from? Uh, he, uh, from Peru. He's a Peruvian. Peru. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, International baby. <laughs> Canadians are slowly starting to leak into the Wildheart family here. Between me and now Crush picked up on the stream team. <laughs> yeah. it, it, it's the aesthetic. Lots of trees and moose. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just a natural fit here. Yeah. Man, two level lead here. We're looking for stuff. There's a light bomb. They find the Mount Fury, and there's a pulse bomb and a mind control. And this is what I was talking about. Haven on the backside with Ivy Tings. They're working together, trying to find some more pitch. They're looking at Dulaw. Can they find him? They do. Here comes a lightning breath. They're looking for more. Porgy's going to go down. And but, oh, no. Actually, he's going to be able to walk. Eh, mm. He was holding on to the avatar. Haven. He was holding on for a little, slack, a little snack. Haven wasn't even worried about the murder, and he's like, nah, I see that false hat, and I'm going right on in there. Porky walking away, 35 Porky. health left on his bar. Mason's still looking for him, though. There we go. Got him. Got him. 
And uh, we're on the core. That's 12 kills right now mm -hmm. to zero. And we're looking to end this game. Uh, this is going to be a game number one here for Wild Heart Esports as they push in for the core. Haven's taking it. 35% left. There's the mind control going out onto Malfury, and they're going to secure themselves another kill. Bunker dropped. Odin's going to come in, but that's not going to buy enough time. And game one Yee. over to Wild Heart Esports. GG is well played. Well played, boys. That's our team. <laughs> our team. That was cool. Man, Haven was right. That was a really cool, like, just, well, it's really cool to see them <laughs> do their thing. What your happened? Ca your camera was, like, frozen on you drinking coffee, and it looked like you had some all down <laughs> your face or something. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's the light from the, from the window. <laughs> yeah, sure. I saw it. Light. I just saw it. I just saw it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, look, it's right here. It's right here, somewhere. Oh, look, they have the uh, they have the <laughs> the match summary up here now for us. Zero yeah. to thirteen. What a clean game for Wildheart. Ooh. Yeah, really, 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 really good. That was a cool last little fight there. Just seeing the the target priorities, and mm -hmm. it's funny. <laughs> we would swap targets before they died, thinking they would die. I'm like, oh wait, wait, we gotta, we actually gotta finish that kill. <laughs> Target. But even then, like, Haven, he didn't care about that murder. And he's like, hey, I see this Falstad down here. And the way him and IB kind of dove back there, found those pick, it, it didn't matter who it was. It was IB back there. It was the Tracer back there. Even the Blaze. It, you, we found those big flanks. We, we had the wave priority, able to mm -hmm. find big flanks and everybody executing on those on those uh, engages. It's really awesome to see. Weary Day with the light bombs as well to set all that stuff up. Um it was it's awesome i that i like seeing play like that it's just oh it's perfect I, I love it just executing combos and team fights and even like map rotations it's so sick you got the replays going yeah 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 i got them showing on stream right now <laughs> nice. i i mean they got to be feeling pretty good after that not a single death on the side of wild heart for their first game of ccl this is uh i hope this hypes them up and like this week kind of really gets them like in the in the right mind frame to just push through this entire season and and make yeah. things work yeah uh by the way if you guys could real quick uh just 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 briefly takes 10 seconds go over to the ccl the wisdom channel grubby's chat exclamation mark at wh spam that shit in uh in the chat. Mm, yeah <laughs> age of coffee thank you so much for the follow welcome in that was a fun game to watch it's really cool i like seeing those kinds of things yeah haven was lurking back there look at that he said he wanted that i wonder oh. I, I wonder what the band priority is going to be for simplicity after that game like the the tracer is so annoying to deal with they didn't really have a lot to kind of like stop her from just doing everything she was doing there um but the sylvanas was also doing a lot of work they were <laughs> They were, uh, she was running around, getting so much damage onto structures, just creating havoc for their team. Like, they didn't really seem to know where they should be and what they should be doing with the pressure that Ivy Tings was creating on that Sylvanas. It, it's just the power of wave clear, and, and you know, <laughs> their wave clear was pretty, was pretty low. If you don't have anything to be able to clear waves and get to where you need to be quickly enough, you're going to fall behind, and it's going to feel bad. You're going to take, you're going to look for suboptimal plays and um yeah and eventually it's just a slow bleed um again that simplicity had they, they had good heroes they they had heroes that did things well mm -hmm. it just bringing it all together to execute on the map it it was missing something yeah um i and i quite frankly i think it was that tychus Maybe if that was something else, you already have a false set. I don't know if there's room for Tychus unless you're actually just trying to fight the whole time at this point with Gus and Minigun uh, onto that Diablo. I feel but, like the, uh, the Tychus pickup was purely like, oh, they have Diablo. We need a counter. Like, right. that's it. It, be, it becomes like this autopilot yeah. kind of thing, yeah. right? We do we do it in Storm League. We've seen it in other, you know, other competitive arenas as well. Um, that's just the response. But again... If that Tychus mm -hmm. was earlier in the draft, and then you flex to something else okay. later, makes sense. But go ahead. Map picks are up. Wildheart is uh, getting the map pick this time, and they're bringing us to uh, Garden of Terror. Excuse me, Garden of Terror. <laughs> <laughs> this isn't a map that I knew. I thought I thought they liked to play, but um, 
maybe after Sky Temple, they're feeling pretty good with just the macro game and that they're just like, oh, we'll go to Garden of Terror. There's lots for us to do there. We can kind of play a similar style where we're sieging their structures and just, you know, really kind of leaving them playing a more reactionary style on the side of simplicity. Um, but interesting map pick. What's your thoughts? Yeah, Garden of Terror, it's back in the map pool uh, this season, right? If I'm not mistaken, mm -hmm. it came back in. So um, Wild Heart isn't... Um, isn't a uh, no, is no stranger on Garden of Terror. It was a map that we did play in season one. Uh, Zergling Weary Day. Obviously, the, the roster is like very different, but Zergling Weary Day are still on their roster. They still understand macro stuff. Yeah. Um, as a matter of fact, Zergling shot calling on Garden of Terror is what brought us a lot of wins on that map, actually. So, hey, it's a throwback. Let's run it back. Let's see if we still got what it takes and uh, and give everybody a good show. All right, well, let's get into this draft here. Um, what do you think is going to be prioritized here? Do we, uh, do, do we see that Sylvanas priority again? Cause I feel like maybe here she can provide what they did on Sky Temple. Maybe we see Simplicity ban that out. Uh, last time they got rid of the Junkrat Lucio. We'll see. What's your thoughts? Mm -hmm. uh, I definitely think Sylvanas will be a, a priority. Again, as far as bans are concerned, we're going to see some Junkrats being removed. Um, it'll probably come yeah. out from if we see simplicity band a junk rat here from the first pick position this tells me that they don't play it um that, or they're not very comfortable with it it's the hawk instead maybe they're gonna bait out a junk rat they, they, they're like hey they'll, they'll ban junk rat maybe we don't need to ban it there it is there's the ban mm -hmm. so uh but yeah, i think sylvanas will maybe a, maybe brightwing is another important one uh and then um uh, i'm sorry sylvanas brightwing and uh, there was my mind just lost uh, Blaze, I think I, I think Blaze again. There you go. And there's a Hogger, yeah. Um, I, I Hogger is okay on this map. I, I, actually, he's very good on this map because of the camps, and you can play him in that flex position to be able to as your jungler essentially. Doesn't have to be your off lane. Can be the 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 four man Hogger that goes and takes camps. Simplicity saying we don't want to play it, and um, I'm not sure if a Zergling has been playing Hogger like that recently. I do know actually, but trying to uh, <laughs> you know <laughs> there's a blaze and there's sylvanas so there's a sylvanas and we answer with blaze and lunara we've got some wave clear we've got some rotation uh control through vision uh so being able to keep it keep tabs on where the enemy's going to go try to split push uh and, and lunara you know responding to sylvanas is is okay it's not a terrible hero to to use yeah so i love and i love that the they they prioritize taking the blaze here with the hogger band out, the Dehaka band out. That that off lane choke is already happening. Uh, yeah. Maybe this maybe this is a game we. Oh no, never mind. Okay, I was gonna say maybe maybe we see some Sonya sneaking in here. I know people have been like, you know, undervaluing Sonya a little bit. This is a map where she can kind of do some stuff with all these camps, but they go for the Leoric instead. Yeah, I, I, this Leoric, you know, is pro, is a response to Blaze, yeah. Tomb, Bunker, da da da. But then the problem becomes is this Lunara. Um, this Lunara can be really annoying in the side lanes and creating a lot of pressure onto the Leoric and preventing him from rotating fast mm -hmm. enough to clear waves. So uh, I, I want to I... see simplicity pick up something that kind of denies that play style Zeratul i just i feel like simplicity's drafting right now is like oh i see hero on wild heart let me just lock the most meta counter to that hero and they're not maybe necessarily thinking oh, about oh how that God. fits in with the rest of their team we got the uh Murden from haven this is like a haven oh my god haven uh favorite here's the Murden. murabin murabin Trying to come up with a pun for for that, but this is a Diablo. Tychus is still up, and that is something that could be okay for us still. I mean, into Leoric and Diablo, it's not terrible, but uh, we'll see. We'll see what Ivy. I, Ivy can probably he can pick whatever he wants here and trade with Mason. Play it. Yeah, it's a cigar. This is what I was talking about being like really annoying for the Leoric. Now mm -hmm. you have two ranged heroes in the lanes that are going to be really annoying to deal with. Now you have even you more have vision on the map too. With Zagar, more vision create... on the map. And then you create so much pressure in the lanes, uh, so much siege pressure in the lanes, because now you're throwing more stuff into the lanes that are going to push your structures. It's going to slow your wave clear down a bit. And then as the game scales, Leoric and Diablo are actually going to be 
taking a lot of damage from those minions, those Roachlings and those Hydralis. Mm -hmm. It's gonna, it's gonna be, or the Hunter Killers. It's gonna be very, very annoying. So I like what Wild Hearts drafting here. Um, you do, we do have this Diablo and this Leoric. I don't know. Um, we, we, we do have to be careful with clumping. We have the, you know, maybe a Wailing Arrow, maybe the, the, the Dragon Arrow that, uh, that hits but uh yeah i mean you could have the potential of like a, a hanzo engage with his arrow followed into an apocalypse with mm -hmm. a wailing arrow on top of that so definitely clumping yeah. is something we really need to watch out for but um you know if if that if wild heart's gonna play this like they played game one where they're just gonna kind of be running all over the map looking for siege pressure um maybe they're less likely to be found together you know you're gonna send a few people to a tower the rest are gonna be doing other things on the map let's uh jump into this here because um, they can yeah. still do this. They have Zagara. Zagara can siege. She has, like, there's enough damage here. Depending on what Lunar goes at four, she can even provide extra siege damage as well. But I wouldn't be surprised if uh, Mason's just going to go, like, a full Q build kind of thing and focus on uh, poking Hanzo and Sylvanas in these fights. Absolutely. Absolutely. We got the Endurance Stim Pack coming out from Blaze this time, this game. Uh, this is the cooldown reduction and mana return on on uh the, on the one button the one key versus the um the auto attack the adrenaline sim pack if i'm not mistaken uh so it means a little bit slower wave clear potentially we got this little nice little storm bolt there haven mm -hmm. playing these playing division the playing these angles looking for the opportunities very 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 good i i love to see it just if, if you're new to tanking and you're trying to learn you know how to be a more proficient tank just look at Haven, mm -hmm. look at the Murden on the, if he's not on the screen, look at the mini map. Look where he's playing. Is he clearing minions? Is he in bushes? Is he on the rotations? Look at him. Yeah, he's just, he's going to slow down the elbow on this rotation. Look, cutting that off on that mini map, but go ahead. We talk about how important having control of vision on a map is, and, and it really is, especially when you get a player like Haven, who's constantly looking for these flanks, sitting in these bushes, trying to find something, get in on that back line where he can. Um, and right now, there's not a lot on the side of Simplicity that provides them that vision other than just being a body on the map. Absolutely. Absolutely. And look at this. Like, they're, they're even... All they're doing is just showing and being annoying mm -hmm. and causing the opponent to, to second guess whatever it is that they're doing. They force the rotation down from the yard to clear mid and Blaze just stayed topside and it's just getting more pressure done to the buildings. They're still going to be able to catch mid, so Wild Hearts is still going to be able to catch mid, so they got the siege camp out. Zagara was pushing bottom lane. It was just Anduin and Murden. Yep. Like, that was just being annoying. That's, that's awesome. We're going to see Wild Heart look to pick up their bruiser camp here. Siege camp is also available in this first seed spawning in. It is going to be on the side of Wild Heart in the bottom part of the map here. It's not a bad spot. Uh, yeah. I'll say... Uh, we're going to see Siege Camp picked up by Simplicity, but they're getting this out a bit late here. That means maybe we just see this first seed go over to Wildheart for free because by the time they rotate down, they're, they're just going to be too late and showing up really late. Um, but if the uh, if the Bruisers and Siege Camps were left in that top lane to go head to head, the, the Siege Camp actually wins out with the range damage that it throws on to the, the, those Bruisers, for those of you that don't know. Zerling's got a big old wave here. He's going to stay up here and slow this down. Ooh, Apto's showing up. Fortunately, no CC there. To be able to keep him, keep him down. Still Sylve up in that top lane. Leo's starting to make his way down. We're going to see Weary Day start the channel here as Haven aggros those little seedlings here and kind of creates some space and zones out the members of Simplicity. Oh, not quite able to get it yet. Yeah, Lunara pushing mid here. Zagara still soaking and clearing bottom. Zergling does need to be careful though. Mm -hmm. Here comes Lunara to come help, help in this uh, in this defense. See if Zergling can maybe bait the Syl, but no, she's gonna use the uh, the uh, Banshee's there reposition, walk away. Pink's coming out. Sie Siege mid Haven looking for a little. Oh, find does he find a Stormbolt onto Dual All? Doesn't. There's going to be a wall bang on the Haven, but nothing's going to really come out of this. It's just both teams just kind of mm -hmm. just. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for here? Juggling for position. 
I was going to say dancing around each other. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. But every time this is happening, though, like, look, pay attention to the minimap, guys. Every time this is happening, somebody on Wildheart is using that opportunity to create pressure in their lanes. That time it was a Gar and Bottom. We're going to see the Leoric fall. Porky's going in, trying to find a counter kill here. Zergling in a little bit of trouble, but a root from Weary Day and a Jet Propulsion out, and he's going to be just fine. In the meantime, Haven going for the channel onto the seed. We're going to see Sylvanas trying to get some siege pressure up in top lane, but she just needs to walk away using that haunting wave to escape once again. Leo's back up. See yeah, how they so want to play this. Is getting, getting some nice pressure done, on, uh, nice damage done on that top side, for sure. But uh, having Zagara in that lane, and you still have Blaze mid. Mm -hmm. like, all the lanes are being covered here for Wildheart, whereas only one for Simplicity. As time goes on, this will, you know, trickle into Wildheart's favor. This positioning here. There's the jet propulsion connects on to Sylvanas. Mason following it up, but the haunting wave is going to save her for the time being. But they have to yeah. hearth now, which means they're gonna have to send more resources into top, deal with Zergling up here. And Lunar's just gonna walk away. She's gonna go clear up mid. In the meantime, Zeg still soaking that bottom lane. Haven and Weary Day getting out the siege camp before this next objective, which is great, great because position. next objective is top. Yep. Zagara putting pressure onto this Leoric. This is not a lane Leoric wants to be in. A lot of pressure. Look at this positioning. This is this is what Haven does. Sits on the flank, just waits for his opportunity to jump in, maybe find a storm bolts and CC. This this objective is in the middle, and Walhart has an option. Give it up and siege bottom. Mm -hmm. Force an overcommittal to the bot side and then go take the objective. Like Lunar and Blaze can stall this out for quite a significant amount of time. I find it's interesting that the heroes their Simplicity is choosing to send oh. down here. Yeah, this is exactly what I mean. The heroes that they're choosing to send down there are the two frontline players. So Mason and Zergling can kind of just like destroy up there. There's no one to protect them. Yeah. And what is Diablo and Lior going to do into a Zagara? Like, they don't clean this up. They don't clean this up. They Why is he here? Lose. Yeah, it's it's tough, right? Like this has to be Hanzo or Sylvanas yeah. or like Sylvanas and Rhaegar. Like you, you need, you need, yeah. This is what I was talking about. Zagara creates a lot of pressure on the lane, in the lane, to where you got you have to come out with some, you have to overcommit with some resources in order to deal with it, mm -hmm. just to match. Yeah. Wildheart now up a fort. They did secure that bottom fort. And, you know, they also walked away with the seed there, too. So we are sitting at two of the three seeds picked up to uh, get these garden terrors out. Yeah, and look at topside. We got camp, bruiser camp pushing topside. The objective's going to spawn on the bottom, and it's just going to be the third seed for Wildheart. So now Simplicity has to make a decision as to what it is they want to do. It looks like they're just going to try and get some counter pressure. Mason almost getting caught. He's going to use those leaping strikes to walk away. And now Haven following up behind him here. And they're actually turning on to Porky a little bit. There's the apocalypse out. But again, the nice leaping strikes. Mason's like, no CC for me today. Let me turn this back around. Porky getting incredibly low. Here's the light bomb. CCing him. He will go down. Weary actually the one to secure the kill there as the seed spawns in. They're going to trade out bottom four, but you know what? I'm sure that they're fine with it. This four actually might not even go down here. So they're going to walk away with Garden Terrors. They're going to oh, walk away with the man. fort. And maybe even another kill onto Sylvanas here. Zergling's trying to make it happen, but that Haunting Wave once again helping Syl reposition. He's delaying the back. He's delaying the back. He doesn't mm -hmm. want her to leave. Yeah. We got top four. We got mid four. And, you know, Blaze w is able, is capable of defending those pushes by himself. He didn't he, even he, secure bottom forward out of that. Like, yeah. Wildheart is trading up so much in these matches today. First objective coming out the Wildheart Esports. All the forts are down, so this is potentially... This is spooky. You can get a lot of damage done here that snowballs this game. Oh, there's a store bolt there onto the Diablo. Beautiful cleanse, though. Being able to make sure none of that follow-up CC blocks him down. Killed. Porky's still solid. 70 souls. Souls. So this, uh, you know, Simplicity right now, they've just hit their level 13, so they are on equal talent here advantage. They have this window here where they need to try to make something happen. Probably not into defending Garden Terrors, but, you know, maybe if they're lucky, Wildheart overstays a little bit after the Garden Terrors go down and they can force a fight on hey. equal talent tiers. 
Haven's jumping I, in there. I just love these dwarves. It's so funny. It's so funny. It's just like he just goes in, throws a storm bolt, and they're like, okay, I'm gonna walk away. Oh, there's another storm bolt. Porky though needs to be careful. Bunker being used on the Ooh. bot side there. Almost killing Sylvanas. Walk away. There's a keep down. A huge wave still existing mid. I like this rotation to the bot side. Create a lot of pressure here out of nothing with the Zagara creating minions. Mm -hmm. Being able to siege us up. Now, there is no bunker available, but all the other heroics are Light Bomb and Maul, so um, I if don't they think... did get engaged on. Yeah, I was just going to say, I don't think they want to stay anywhere nearby. They're going to hit their 16s yeah. well before. They just back up now, start to take what's, whatever is up on the map. They're going for Siege Giants right now. Haven's actually anchoring in this top, keeping an eye on things. The Lunara Wisp is there as well. He's alone, though. So not much they don't can know do. that. So, so to be yeah. fair, they don't know that. They saw that they were being revealed, and that he was lurking. They're like, oh, maybe. <laughs> Got friends. I don't know. Ivy though. Yeah. Pushing the spot side. And, and when you're behind like this, uh, like simplicity, your moves to get back in the game become so telegraphed. Anybody that shows by themselves on one side of the map just becomes a target to get ganked. Speaking of, a couple. Couple abilities used there. Light bomb goes down. Nothing comes of it, but I mean, we're still 16 here. We can look for more. Blaze is top lane, so keep that in mind. Mm -hmm. Don't have the numbers advantage, but I think you know, just watching Wildheart play today, they're they're very comfortable with just showing there and kind of creating this pressure for simplicity and a little bit of nervous while somebody else. Is, knows they're not going to throw the 4v5 and creating pressure elsewhere on the map. So we saw Blaze pushing out top lane, now working on the Bruiser camp. They're just creating so much space for another player to gain value on the map somewhere else, whether that be siege pressure, camps, whatever. Yeah, yeah. Um, you, you saw when we were all postured there on that side, there were some pings in the bush like, hey, I, I think there's somebody here. Um, Haven has conditioned his opponents to <laughs> be uh, cognizant of every single bush. They don't see him. Just, just be, just be uh, cautious. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> he just sends it. There's a jet propulsion. It doesn't connect. Mind control, mind control comes out, but no follow-up there. Ball of, a ball of magic just cleanse the mind control. Haven north tossing in. There's going to be a wall bang there onto the onto Haven. He's going to be okay, though. He still has Avatar available, mm -hmm. and we still have the Anduin pool. Where did they? He's looking. Oh, no. He ends up going down, unfortunately. Oh, nice arrow. arrow from Simplicity. Let's see if they can find more off it. Jet propulsion to get uh, Blaze out of there. Looks like that's all they're going to find, but this is something that they needed. I mean, they just yeah. got their 16s. They have a chance now to kind of try and get the map in a little bit of a better state for them. Use that death timer to their advantage and, and do something with it. Uh, hopefully do something with it. I hope they don't just, yeah. you know, sit back and do a camp and not try to push something here. Yeah. Hey, been a little too deep there. Mm -hmm. uh, we're really unable to get the... Uh, the the leap of faith off to keep him alive. Orky is walking forward, but you know what? To be completely honest, still needs to respect the Zagara. Look at his health. Look how much health he's losing. Yeah. The Zagara minions. Yep. Like, yes, this is a 5v4, but Zagara, like, spawns, like, 80 heroes on the map. Look, look at Porky's health. It's it's gone. You you cannot you cannot assume that you actually command the space that you that you think you have against the Zagara, and then you have Maul available. Look, you're looking for more. There's the Mind Control coming out, the Light Bomb, and this is probably going to be a dead Porky, to be completely honest, and it is. And Berber mm -hmm. on the backside on the Leoric gets two Leaping Strikes, will go down as well, and uh, yeah, Haven just showed up. They'll probably siege up the bot keep and play for the objective. I don't think we end here. I don't think that's the play. Well, Diablo came right back up there, so, you know, not having that extra death timer makes it a little bit difficult to end at this point, especially being on even talent tiers. Oh, yeah. But Wildheart, you know, they're scaling towards those 20s now. It's, it's a really hard game for Simplicity at this point. They're going to be constantly fighting from behind a little bit, but they still have this window where they can try and force something on uh, equal talent tiers. Leo's about to be up in a few seconds here. This next seed is coming up. It'll be number two, though, not number three, and it'll... <laughs> It, it's that third one that's going to be the struggle for them because if they can get this one, great. But if they, uh, the next one after that is oh, going to be a Haven. 20 fight. Oh, <laughs> the ancestral is going to come through, keep Porky alive a little bit longer. The Wishing is trying so hard to keep that Diablo up, but it's not enough. He will go down. No souls this time. Full death timer. 
Haven in that back line just harassing, wishing, and now on to Sylvanas here. That is going to be a two for nothing so far. Wildheart is not giving up this retreat. Here comes the light bomb. Connects on to Leoric. They're looking at Dual as well. He jumps over the wall. Going to walk away. But Haven going in. There he goes. God. With <laughs> just... oh, There was like five dwarf tosses in that team fight. And that's it. They're looking to end now. They got a few Katas coming in mid. They have their Siege Giants here. Nice long death timers on the side of Simplicity for them to end out game number two. Core falling 60% and going down. This will be Wildheart taking game number two of a best of five series here for CCL. GG. GG's, well played. There was a moment there where the casters went into simplicity comms. And mm -hmm. I mean, like, I, I gotta go back and watch the VOD because they're, they're all speaking in Korean. So I don't think we're gonna understand what they're saying. But. Uh, I know how. Pretty, pretty funny. Honestly. How. Uh, it's interesting if, if they are all speaking in Korean. To have your tank player be the one that's not speaking and doesn't speak Korean because he's the one that really needs to look for the engages and like kind of set up plays. Um, yeah. So I wonder how much of a struggle that is for their comms because I like we kind of have the the opposite problem is our tank player speaks Korean and the rest of our team's English and that's the same thing, right? Like, but yeah. I mean, I guess everyone kind of speaks hots, right? They got their pings, they got their hero names down. Yeah, uh, yeah, they just know what they got to do, right? And yeah. you can kind of just. Body language, I know this sounds weird, this sounds cringe in a video game, but body language does exist, and, and here's the sword. You can kind of just, based off of your, your allies' posture, your opponent posture, mm -hmm. kind of just infer what they're going to do and respond accordingly. But, Who died this just game a, on Wildheart? It was Haven. It was Haven. Oh, he right. was the only one that died. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Report him. Auto attack build coming out from Porky. I for sure thought we would see like W build lightning breath or something. I don't know if the APOC style uh, mm -hmm. was the pick and then the auto attacking into like a murden who's also slowing your auto attacking and ccing you yeah. it's hard it's tough it's tough but hey learning experience for this this team for this roster for yeah simplicity. this is this is very much a developmental roster these are all brand new players to ccl this is going to be this is going to be a season of growth for them i don't think anyone is expecting simplicity to be coming out you know a top for team this season but you know this is a chance for these players to get in the experience playing against more uh skilled players and maybe you know they they scale maybe you know come next season of ccl whether they stay on this team or move to other teams um you know we'll see them shine a little bit more but it, it's hard like it's got to be a really hard season for simplicity having a full brand new roster of players mm -hmm. Hopefully everyone is making, you know, bank with those bets uh, <laughs> for, for on that wild heart stock. Uh, I don't even know what that that thing is, how to use it, but it's, I, I see people talking about it. It's, it's funny. Yeah, I haven't uh, tried it yet either. Yeah, uh, there was some talk in the uh, team chat, the wild heart team chat, uh, to, is it today or yesterday, talking about like specific talents and or heroes that were going to be picked and losing and a weary day was like uh he was like oh. insider insider trading insider info market manipulation yeah <laughs> i don't know i i tried to check it out but it, it i don't know if my husband has like the that certain kind of website blocked or something because i just have network mm. areas er, error like it's not connecting but it's working oh, for everyone else and like clearly my internet's working otherwise i wouldn't be streaming um so i don't know Yeah, here's the replay here. We see, uh, well, I mean, obviously I'm watching on your stream, so it's a little bit of a delay, but uh, like Haven just auto attacking out of his mind and just just continue, just pushing the fight forward, mm -hmm. advancing forward, keeping up the momentum, keeping up the aggression. You can do that with, with that hero and with the composition that he had. Uh, so it's pretty, pretty cool. Let's see. Now, uh, are they going to break right now? Or? Uh, I'm not sure if they're going to jump right into the next game or not here, but so far with everything that's happening this is just gonna this looks like and i was sure it was gonna be anyway a, a wild heart 30 today um yeah and it's but it's a, like we were saying simplicity is very much a development roster here this is all brand new players they have the communication um challenge to to work with as well with porky being you know english speaking the rest of the team all speaking in korean so there's challenges there to overcome um 
so yeah, it'll be interesting to see how they scale as the season goes on. Uh, who they can take some games off of, if they can take some games off of anyone here. Looking at the uh, at the hots chat in, in the Discord, some interesting conversations there. You know, uh, so Whisper had asked a question: Do we consider uh, Crucible winners to be ex HTC players? So I said mm. yes. Some people say no, and then we're just looking at. There's, there's some stats there of who has ex HTC players versus. Uh, mm. who it's pretty interesting. Haven, you know, that was somebody who won a Crucible. I didn't Crucible. know that. Yeah. As it's early. So. Were they all, uh, you know, won it in 2018 and then HTC canceled players? Correct. Correct. Uh, yeah. I knew Zergling had. Mm -hmm. uh, but they're going to take a, a quick break here. So the next match is going to be back up in about 420. Nice. <laughs> um, but. I'm curious to see where we're going to go here. If Simplicity is going to stick with that first pick option, Wildheart gets the map pick again. Uh, because it it just really feels like Wildheart has all the control of these maps. They have the vision. They're watching these rotations. They're creating pressure. Um, maybe maybe Simplicity chooses to bring it to like a two-lane map where it's a little bit more contained and they can't get away with that kind of play. But I don't... Mm. I, it's a struggle. It's just going to be a struggle because I don't know if even if they went to a two lane map and tried to play more off like you know let's say, well Boe is is banned. What's left in the map pool? Yeah, I got to check. Infernal shrines, mm -hmm. uh, uh, Dragonshire. No. Yeah, Dragonshire. Oh, I I, I can tell you where we're. Maybe, I, I, maybe I'm not allowed to spoil, but I know where we're going for game three. Spoil it, it's fine. Okay. Uh, s we're going to uh, Towers. And this is a map Ooh. pick from Simplicity. It's saying Wildheart has first pick, so it looks like they, they wanted the map option to go somewhere they're comfortable on. So we'll see. Yeah, yeah. Um... Do you mind if I go take a break for a short, like, like 30 seconds? Uh, yeah, hang on. We'll pop to, uh, right, right, right. we'll pop to a, uh, do I have I'm to frozen right on, your, on your stream too. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like I'm stoned out of my mind. <laughs> Cannot confirm nor deny. Uh, hang on. I want to see, I don't even know if I have a be right back screen. I think it's all like GGS themed one. Oh, there. Let me just remove some of this old stuff though. All right, cool. Cool. We'll be back in a second, guys. Uh, two minutes here until the next match. Um, and a big thank you to you guys for watching this on my channel. I know there's a lot of options for you guys to be tuning in to watch CCL today. So the fact that you're here watching it on my channel means the world to me. So thank you, thank you, thank you. We'll be back soon.
everyone, welcome back. We're here casting the Simplicity versus Wildheart Esports CCL match today. You guys don't know me, I'm Jazzeline. Joining me is Goon, his camera's frozen again this time you're in. <laughs> I have so, I, I need like two more monitors to do this just cause I, I need to have the, the game and the streams uh, like full size windows for OBS to capture it properly without me having to crop stuff and moving stuff around. And I'm just running out because I also need to have your camera showing without it freezing. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, we are ready to get into game three here. They're going to show map bands in just a few short seconds. But I mean, right now, Wildheart is just looking so dominant into simplicity. Do you think there's a way out for them here? Do you think there's a way they can find themselves a game four? I mean, if we troll hard enough, sure. <laughs> I mean. This is, I mean, Zergling, Zergling is making jokes about bringing out the murky last night. Oh uh, god, please don't do it. Please, <laughs> just, let's just end. Let's just end it. <laughs> uh, nah, nah. It, it's tough. It, it does look like Simplicity is kind of lost a little bit. Yeah. Some of their macro decision making is a little strange. Uh, they look like they get a little desperate. But, mm -hmm. uh, but yeah. No. Tough. Um, sorry, I just need to turn this music down a little bit. Um... Yeah, I, I don't think too when you're in a in a position where like every game matters. Um, because let's say there's a tiebreaker, right? For that third or fourth Resident spot. Games. I got you fixed. Okay. <laughs> let's say there's a tiebreaker for that third or fourth spot in, in the standings, right? It's it goes off wins, right? Your map wins. So you don't necessarily wanna be like, Oh, it's a fun game, let's let's do some meme -y stuff and throw a match because at right. the end of the day that one match might actually be the deciding factor of whether you have to run the gauntlet or not. Exactly. So that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Keep it clean, boys. Yeah. I'm trying to go to the land. <laughs> you can do you can do meme -y stuff in draw in uh, your scrims, right? <laughs> yeah. Here we go. Let's take yeah. a look here at these uh these map bans and picks for this afternoon. If you guys are just tuning in, Wildheart took game number one on Sky Temple. They took game number two on Garden of Terror. And now Simplicity is bringing us to Towers of Doom, a map pick from them after losing game two, which means Wildheart will have the first pick here. Those bans for this evening. Uh, Battlefield of Eternity taken away by Simplicity. Cursed Hollow banned out by Wildheart. Um, and yeah, that's that's kind of where we're at here. So Towers of Doom game is this. This is a comeback map. Maybe this is the way. Uh, this is the way Simplicity yeah. finds their game four. Hey, we saw Storm almost pull it off against Thirty K not too long ago. The mm -hmm. series right before this. Uh, yeah, notoriously a comeback map for sure, for sure. But hey, if you guys are having a good time here, tell your friends. Come hit up Jazzy. We got here with Casting Heroes of the Storm. Uh, this is Wild Heart. You know, we are a little bit biased, oh. but that's okay. There we go. There's your draft up for you guys. I'm sure you heard the. The sounds in the background there. There's a Brightwing ban again, you know. This is um I, I'm pretty sure this is a hero that Simplicity like to or you know, want to play or like to rely on. Uh, based off of conversations that I may or may not have heard. Um and it also removing that hero enables certain annoying mosquito type characters to mm -hmm. be able to move around the map really. And then there's a Porky uh, Stitches band. Remove the coin flip. That is a good. You, you you introduce a map like Towers of Doom that has, you know, that's the comeback map, and then you throw a coin flip associated with it with the stitches. Yeah, it gets pretty toxic. And there's that first pick, Lucio. Coming mm. out. I Made it love me a weary day, Lucio. Um, I remember when I first joined Wildheart, and it was my first time sitting down in scrims watching these guys play, and Weary was playing Lucio, and it was the first time I was like, really, like, really just taking it in how good these people are in comparison to like me and my Diamond League players, you know? <laughs> uh, it, it do be hitting different. Yeah. When you have a good Lucio, when you have a, like an awesome Lucio player, like you just feel good. You know, I do this thing where when I'm playing a character, there's a certain vibe that I feel when I'm playing that character. And then, and then the way I press my buttons and I move my mouse and things like that, they kind of they they uh, evoke these feelings of the character's personality. Like a, uh, a Heroes of the Storm method actor and player form. <laughs> When I'm playing Lucio, <laughs> when I'm playing Lucio and I'm, you know, you think about your hand motions with the mouse and with the buttons, 
it feels like you're actually DJing. Like when you sit there, you <laughs> take a step back and you're looking at it, you're like, I am moving my character like a DJ, like a DJ would on the turntables or whatever. Uh, and then Blaze, for you're just like, chunk, chunk, chunk. Ooh, go hard. You know, it, you feel it in the way you press your buttons. I love character design. Uh, and, and, and uh, yeah, just hero designs like that in, in, in any game, really, mm. um, where the mechanics match the, the vibe of the character. Yeah, anyways, I've, I've spent way too much time thinking and feeling about this yeah. game. <clears throat> Got the Genji yeah. and the Garrosh band there for the second band phase. Simplicity. That's a big, that's big. The Garrosh being removed, that's tough. I was gonna say, we got the Joe still left up. Maybe we see a Porky Joanna, and there's the Hogger coming through for Berber. Uh, it'll be interesting to see Haven playing a Nubarak here because of that ping issue. Again, maybe maybe with the uh, entire enemy team also being on ping, it's just gonna all even out, but um, <laughs> maybe. it's one of those heroes where ping absolutely can hit a little bit harder on the Nubarak in comparison to some other tanks, so. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we'll see. I guess our cocoon just... is point and click. You just press it onto the tracer. I was just gonna say, uh, first of all, Zergling just running it back, Blaze all series. Yep. <laughs> so nobody's gonna know what he plays except for Blaze, <laughs> right? <laughs> True. True. <laughs> Um, but I like the Hanzo pickup here. Their team, uh, uh, all of their drafts today have really put some some focus on kind of controlling the map here and Hanzo provides that a little bit more with his vision um and we got the tracer being run back once again by mason Rainy. all right Rainy. yeah yeah this is gonna be tough you know if you go blessed shield you gotta worry about a, or i'm sorry lucio being able to high five your targets you've got bunker as well tracer's already pretty slippery um if you're with this composition man this is a problem i have with johanna man like, I feel like you want another melee in there that can engage for yes. you. Or, or, yeah. or just another hero in general. It doesn't have to be a melee. It just has to be something that can kind of engage that she can follow up on. Or at least, like, enhance. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it really does feel like she's just lacking any form of engage. She's just kind of there to soak a bunch of damage, blind some people once in a while. But it's not anything, yeah. like, solid enough of an, an engage. Especially when you end up with... Uh, Joanna's taking Falling Sword. I've been saying this for a little bit, but I prefer Blessed Shield like a lot of the time, unless you really, really need that Unstoppable to keep your team alive. I I feel like taking Falling Sword is just, okay, how do we ever fight? We, we don't really, we can never be the initiators here. Yeah, absolutely. All right, let's get into this game. Got do do all on the uh, Sylvanas, Porky playing the Joe, Atto on the Greymane, Wishing playing Rhaegar and Berber on Hogger this time around. Is this it? Is this the draft that gets them to game four? I will know. We'll, we'll have to wait and see. Zergling playing the Blaze. We got Weary on the Lucio. Haven playing a Nubarak. Mason Blaze playing the Tracer. Last but not least, Ivy Tings on the Hanzo. Pleb Horse, Pleb Skid. <laughs> Slug on, says man. down with the Falling Sword pick Pickers, people riot. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I'm sneezing like crazy now. I don't know what's going on. Allergies hit you this time of the year? Oh, man. I work outside all day, and I've been fine until today. Uh-oh. Hopefully it's <laughs> just allergies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Ooh. Both these teams just, you know, clearing out that mid wave, and now they're going to start with that rotation. Weary Day interrupting a rotation. Haven coming over to... Uh, to mess with it as well, but it's not like they have anyone sitting in that bottom lane catching that soak while they're interrupting the rotation. They're just they're just being annoying. Weary Day needs to be a little careful here. He's getting <laughs> he's getting poked down. I think he's just like eh, I can get away with this play. I'm not gonna be punished for it. Yeah, it's funny because he, he kind of keeps baiting the opponent to just kind of go back and keep hitting him. Yeah. And what ends up happening is it makes them slow to those rotation back to mid, where Tracer's able to pick no, up that Weary. side soak. Oh man. They're not, they're not really, uh, I don't know. It's, it's interesting. They're, they're just kind of like annoying them, but nobody really was catching that bottom wave. Haven ended up going down there to get a little bit. We have Zergling actually rotating down as well. So they might go for a camp invade here. Hoggers around, this could be an all out brawl over this first camp. See if they can get onto nobody. the point, but no. 
That's going to be Simplicity grabbing their camp here. Now Wildheart on the retreat. Weary Day going in, pushing them back there with that boop. They're going to walk away. They did manage to grab their siege camp in the in that window as well before they went for the invade. So it's not like they're risking losing something if they did go for the fight there. Yeah. I like that. You know, hey, we're going we're gonna to look aggressive. We're going to be aggressive, uh, postured aggressive. And... and Hey, we don't want this. We don't have to take this. Ooh, we've got a bro charge there. Going on to onto Porky, the cleanse and the iron skin coming out, being able to keep him alive. Um, but yeah, like, hey, we don't need this. We don't have to take this fight, but let's just kind of show force and, and see if we can get something. I, mm -hmm. I, I like I like moves like that. Oop. Accidentally paused it. What's your in-game time? Or the 226. Time okay, all right. A little bit ahead of me. That's fine, like oh. half a second. <laughs> That's fine. That's okay. Fine. I'm gonna have these uh, first altars spawning in here. It's one in bottom and the two up top. Usually you see those off laners traded out. Wildheart trying to get a little bit of damage onto Simplicity before this objective here. Mason using that bomb on Tracer. So she's not gonna have that up for the, the uh, objective fight here. Ooh, Haven's catching Grey Mane. Show the Grey Mane! Show the Grey Mane! Come on! <laughs> oh, there it is! We got it! Apto ends up going down. Duel, though, does need to be careful. Haunting Wave able or still available for them to get away. And Wishing getting ran down here. Here comes the Tracer, the Hounds of Scatter, and the Stormbow to confirm the kill. Porky, though, eh, still has Iron Skin. He's going to be able to get away. Ooh, oh, and wait, this timing... Oh. Blame it on the pig. Blame it on the pig. <laughs> <laughs> Haven will go down there. A little uh, a little bit of greed jumping under towers looking for that kill on a Porky. Weird is going to go for that bottom channel. It's going to see the score uh, 32 to 36 here in favor of Wildheart Esports. By the way, did you see my dog earlier? When we were in that break? Did you see that? No, I she, didn't. Oh, she was like laying on her back like all like school. Aww. Like, she looked like she melted on the floor. It's funny. Anyways. All right, level Man, seven. These allergies. Is it allergies? What's going on with me? <laughs> we, we hope it's allergies, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Siege camps back up here. Simplicity making a play for theirs. Wild Hearts already started theirs up on their side here. It's going to be a trade out for objective. Porky's walking over. Uh, they might be able to invade here, but Porky needs to get in there right now. And he's going for it. This is a, uh, you know, Blaze is top. They're going to have to just give this. Is it going to go over to Simplicity? Let's see if the, they can get much out yeah. of these camps pushing in, though. So uh, they are missing nice. Soak with that uh, with that invade. Nice play there for Simplicity capitalizing on, on the, the rotational advantage from, from Hogger. Um, hey, get some damage done with this and maybe even push push the bot fort with the Sylvanas, get some pressure and start opening up that that uh that uh condition for yourself. I don't know win condition, but you know, definitely advantageous. Mm, they're looking for Porky here. They are gonna find it. Nice job from the Hanzo securing the kill there. Nice and chunked down from that bomb on Tracer. Right before the objective. The, the other thing I just wanted to point out really quickly is, is Lucio was actually rotating up through mid when they were going for that push to catch the soak in mid, and it allowed Blaze just to stay top the entire time, and he was pushing in that wave. He's now mid. He's going to catch that wave that came after. Uh, but with the pick onto Joe, they are going to be in a much better position for this next objective. Haven is getting poked down here. They're moving away. I think he's going to be able to walk away. Hanzo's trying to create some pressure. Just allow Weary Day for this channel here, and Wildheart, no problem. Going to take those few shots. It's going to bring the score 28 to 36 in their favor. Level 10s just on the horizon here for wow. both teams, but well, heart. We'll definitely see. There it is. We'll definitely see the high five there uh, for sure to kind of help uh, against this Johanna. Lucio does a pretty good job at just messing up mm -hmm. anything Johanna wants to do. High five the uh, for the Blessed Shield or the... Um, the falling sword you can speed your allies away with falling sword you know it's it's tough those it's tough other those other ultimates we have coming out blaze uh talenting into bunker we have the dragon arrow from hanzo Oops, speaking of that's gonna go right through there no no connections on uh and cocoon being picked up by the anubrak yeah uh mason blaze got a little close to nice scatter arrow does complete porky getting chunked out um the the 
Mason Blaze took a lot of damage there. There was a snap pick, go for the throw. That was always going to come out onto the Mason Blaze to get the kill, but mm -hmm. able to recall away just in time. After though, he's looking, he's putting some pressure there onto the Hanzo. Oh, nice, nice. look Ooh. onto Berber. He gets out of there with the Horda pull, turns back around, is looking at Mason. Mason rewinds. Can he blink out of there? He is going to survive. Nice, nice try from Berber there. In the meantime, Cocoon used on wishing. Everybody managing to stay alive for the time being. Nice play from Berber there, getting the getting the the stun onto the fort, and preventing the kill from happening, and almost turning that, almost almost getting the kill mm -hmm. in return. Beautiful, beautiful play. Channel starting here, interrupt from Haven, going to come through there. Simplicity once again starting to get that channel off. Apto actually able to get it. They weren't interrupting in time there, and that one will go over to Simplicity. 28 to 32 now in core shots, still in favor of Wildheart. Here comes Zergling on the flank. Ooh, does reveal, but does want to prevent Hogger from counter engaging with the flank. Forces the 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 Hog Wild away. And we should go back to the lanes. The wave through for Wildheart is a little like yeah. Painful, just a little bit. Tracer having to pick up side soak for Blaze constantly is a little annoying. Um, well, I don't mind that so much because it just means Blaze is, is really opening up that top sure. lane. Whenever they go back up there again, you'll see he has that entire front wall down because he's, he doesn't lane, always too. have to... Uh, yeah, it doesn't have to rotate into mid there. Whether it be Mason or Weary that's running up to mid to catch the soak, it's just creating True. space for Blaze to continue to pressure top. Like, look, right now, he, nobody is up there. Like, Hogger is constantly having to go mid because his team's not covering mid for him, which just means Blaze is running it down top. And now here comes Tracer going to harass the Hogger in that mid lane. There forces the, the Hortipult. I, I don't think we've seen a Hortipult happen in a fight just yet. It's all been, you know, Disengages, yeah. Yeah. Orkey looking like he maybe wanted to make something happen. There's the arrow out from Hanzo. They engage onto a Nubrak, but a nice oh. wailing arrow. They're turning this fight. They get the pick on a Blaze. But Mason able to get it out of there. Well See if Haven is going to be as lucky, though, as he's getting slowed down on the disengage. Has to use that cocoon onto Rhaegar. He'll walk away, and that's going to be a one for nothing for Simplicity as we get into this next altar phase. Well played there for Simplicity, capitalizing on that clumpage that we saw. We had the wailing arrow. Um, Catching, catching Weary Day and unable to uh, actually high five his allies to keep him to keep him safe. But those cooldowns are not available here, and we got a pulse bomb. There's a stun there on the duel as well. Mm. He's pretty low. Do they find a kill? They don't. But we do have the high fives available. Blaze coming back up now. He's on his way over to join this fight. Tunnels aren't open quite yet, so he does have to walk all the way here. We're gonna see Ivy Ting starting up the channel here. Porky's trying to walk in, interrupts with the blind. blind. Haven on the flank, just trying to create some space below. Jet Propulsion goes out, but it does not connect. Goes right through the members of Simplicity. However, maybe is enough space here for somebody to get a channel now on this altar, dragging all of Simplicity down into the bottom lane. Weary Day going for the channel. No interrupt this time around, and Wildheart will secure this altar, bringing the score 24 to 28. Yeah, two ults still down. The Wailing Arrow and the Ancestral, two really impactful cooldowns for Simplicity. Not available there against Wild Hearts. Mm -hmm. uh, well, they had everything except for Cocoon. I think Cocoon still had like 10 seconds at that point. So they went, hey, just give it up. It's fine. It's just four shots. Yeah. Uh, don't have to look for too much more. Like this constant harassment onto Berber this entire game. Mason's been making these rotations and he's being forced to use some uh, important cooldowns. This time, he's, he saves mm -hmm. the Horde of Pult this time, but uh, twice now they force it out of him. Yep, yep. And, and these two forts, top and mid, are, are slowly getting chipped away. Mm hmm. It's uh, potentially setting up for, you know, late game six cap from Wildheart if they get mid fort low enough, top fort low enough. And obviously bottom is like always the priority here in the first place. Mason's going in. Look at that Berber. He finds the kill. Down goes Hogger. Going to catch that mid wave now. Greyman's coming up. And this is the thing. They've got the off laner now. If they don't send people up there, they're going to be missing way too much soak. Look at top lane. There's a wave pushing in. Blaze is doing that top camp. Top fort is really in trouble right now. And I don't even know if they know it. This is really, really awesome, awesome play macro-wise from Zerglin being able to do that. By the way, that Pulse Bomb got its full damage off. The the pummel from the Hog Wild wore off 
right before that pulse bomb exploded, so he was able to help confirm the kill. Otherwise, it would have been like mm -hmm. 30 percent, 40 percent less spell spell damage on that pulse bomb. A little bit of scrapping going back and forth here. 16 is about to pop for Wildheart. This is really, really good for them. They should be able to get two. Uh, and if they really want to press it, press their luck, they'll try for the third one. But I think two is fine. Yeah, two is perfectly fine to walk away with here. We're going to see the right hand one getting picked up by Tracer. Uh, mid also getting locked in here for Wildheart. So that's going to bring the score 24 to 16 in their favor. And these forts are just slowly getting whittled down. This is this is kind of a bit of a scary position for Simplicity to be, be in. If if they get team wiped, you know, as you get into this late game, this is just a six cap for Wildheart, and, and it's all downhill from there. Uh, there's a bit of a fight breaking out in bottom. Wildheart trying to get some pressure in on that front wall here. It's the only lane that they really haven't got too much structure damage in, funnily enough, because it's the one that usually you see a lot of focus on too. Oh, no, yeah. Sylvanas getting caught out in mid, oh. though. You know, now they're starting to send the Sylvanas and pick up the side soak for, um, for the Hogger, but it's a little too late at this point. Mm -hmm. That should have been the case earlier on in this in this game. Um, so now she's trying to catch side soak when the waves are already so pushed f uh, forward, and she ends up putting herself in a precarious position where Tracer and Anubarak exist. Yeah, Bunker and the arrow forced out there on side of Wildheart. A couple really key ultimates down. But without those 16s, can't really force much here. Gonna uh, lose their siege camp to Wildheart. We might actually see some damage now onto this bottom fort. I think the other thing, you're talking about Sylvanas catching that side soak for Hogger. But we've already seen Hogger getting ganked multiple times, or almost yeah. ganked multiple times. And Sylvanas is an even more uh, gankable target than, than he is. So it's, it's <laughs> difficult to do that with... Tracer just constantly harassing whoever shows up in mid, or Tracer plus a Nubarak, Tracer with whoever escorts her to mid to check things out. Um, mid forward is actually about to go Ooh. down here. They're looking at Zergling. He does not have Bunker up. 20 second cooldown. They're going to find a pick here. Down Blaze goes. Wildheart yes. looking at them on the uh, rotation here, but this is a 5v4. Six scenes are online for simplicity. This is kind of what they need to stay in this game at this point. They got the mid fort. They lost Zergling for it. And look at this engage. They're just going straight into the back line here. Apto getting stunned. The Ancestral does not come through on time. He's going to go down. Nice. That makes it a one for one. Blaze is down, but so it is the gray main. Let's see if they push in and try to get a little bit more here. They're not concerned with channeling their altar. They're just concerned with all Ooh. out brawling here. Haven going in on the flank here. There's the bomb out onto Wishing. Ancestral is going to connect. Weary Day getting chunked down in the back line by Berber. Haven rotating back around here, kind of watching that flank. Mason, Weary, and Ivy just pushing back the members of Simplicity. They still have that mid fort, so they have Double a bit stun. more uh, control here. Weary's going for that channel. In comes Berber onto the back line. Ivy Ting's jumping out here. He's gonna start the channel here. There's the high five onto Haven. Mason Blaze harassing on the side here. Duol and Wishing too low to really step oh in boy. without getting threatened by Tracer. Here's Hogger. He will fall. That altar getting picked up by Wildheart. They also are going to oh, secure oh. their right hand altar too. And that's going to bring the score 6 to 24. Three kills right now for Wildheart. And the here's. Pure, unfiltered, raw aggression coming out, even being down the blaze. Finding the opportunity to stop the cap, find the pick, and then continue to fight. Beautiful. I love that dive onto the back line. They weren't like blazes down. They didn't even care. They're just saying, look, we're going in here. We know that they're overextending into our side right now. Let's just dive them. And like we were saying before, all of these forts are incredibly low, so that they can look to to just cap these forts and create pressure elsewhere. Level 20 is online now for them here. Bottom fort does go down. There's a siege camp down there for, to, for them to pick up. Zergling's going to start, start this top one. Just need to be a bit careful. Simplicity is all around to see this, but I think he has an idea of what's going on here. So they are showing on that camp. The only one not is Porky right now. I mean, this is, you know, at this point in the game, Simplicity really needs to be on top of controlling these win conditions. Uh, a couple sapper camp or camps walking through, or even a couple sappers walking through, and a boss player potential win conditions. The six caps a potential win condition. On top of these altars coming up right now as well, they are controlling one of uh, Simplicity's towers. So that'll give them five shots. They need one additional shot to end it, or take both towers. Yep, or both altars, yep. I should say. Both altars, you got you know, you can 
Top, don't really worry about top too much right now. Haven sitting in this bush waiting, waiting for his opportunity. Who's he looking for? Finds the hogger. There's a blessed shield. High five available. Wow, he oh. actually is able to get through that choke and survive. Haven so close to going down. Cocoon out onto Berber. Zergling still living in that back line. Drops the bunker. Apto and Sylvanas on the... Getting so incredibly low. There's the jet propulsion. Lands on a sylv. Down they go. Wishing oh. trying to walk away now. But can he make it? In the meantime, Hogger having a 1v1 down with Haven. <laughs> and oh, I guess a 1v2. And Ivy Ting's there as well. He will go down. Followed by the Ragar. Chases on for the remaining members of Simplicity here. As Wildheart look to close out game number three. The CCL matchup here at Porky. Only one left up. Two alters to channel. And oh, this is going to be go. a 3 0 for Wildheart Esports today. GG's and well played. Well played. Uh, Rook, that mixing fire right there from Weary Day on the Ancestral. Snap happening. Cutting that healing in half and helping to just essentially mm -hmm. shorten that fight. That fight, it would have went a little bit longer if that Ancestral went off. It went very well played. That was awesome. That was cool to see. Ah, very well played. Nice start of the season here from Wild Hair. Let's take a look at this match summary. 3-14. to 14. A lot of really clean games from our players today. A lot of them walking away, not even dying once in all, like any, in the entire series. <laughs> we got to chat to Haben. Haben's been the, the inter. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I certainly died a couple times. Everybody, everybody died a couple times, but it's okay. You're the tank. If you die, that's okay. <laughs> that's your job, you right? Yeah. You trade <laughs> one for one for nine. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. Well played. Anything that's sticking out to you on these talents here that you felt made a huge impact? Um, I keep seeing wishing take this healing totem talent. I I, I do I do like it sometimes. I, I don't know if this is the map to to take it, but mm. he always goes with that. Was Zergling go with the Instur endurance stim with the uh, I forget what this level four on Blaze is called, uh, but I wonder if he if he goes with the adrenaline stim pack what that does for his wave clear by himself I, I will say having endurance impact in team fights is really strong it's really nice especially when you have the uh collision course and the uh when you go with the two e talents at 13 and 16 where you get cooldown reduction you're pumping out ease jet propulsion mm -hmm. after jet propulsion after jet, jet it's like icy veins for the jet propulsion so it's yeah. pretty good pretty good that was awesome though what a what a great start to the season here for uh, Wildheart. I hope that they can kind of use this 3-0 and get some good momentum. They're feeling good as we head into next weekend. Uh, next weekend, who are we playing next weekend? Let me let me go double check that real quick. I think it's Oxygen. I think I think it is. Pretty sure it's Oxygen. Let's like open up the schedule here. Yeah, week two, we are playing on Saturday, the second match of the game uh, versus Oxygen Esports. So you uh, you had it right there. Yeah. I'll freeze your camera while I was looking. <laughs> If anybody wants to donate an old monitor, I'm looking for an extra two or three. <laughs> Grab an old TV you got lying around. Mm -hmm. um, no, I mean, I'm excited. It, it, one of the things that I think is also um, interesting to, to think of as well is there's always been that divide between NA and EU teams. Like, you know, a team is either very heavy NA or very heavy EU, which makes mm -hmm. scrimming a little bit difficult for NA, NA heavy teams to scrim EU heavy teams. It just doesn't happen very often unless unless you have a, a team full of players that, you know, don't work during the day or don't go to school during the day. They're just, mm -hmm. uh, you know, real gamers <laughs> out there. Um, you just really can't scrim them. So uh, it'll be interesting to see how the NA teams with 30k as their scrim partner kind of scale throughout the season in comparison to EU teams that have like the Chili Mountain uh, oxygen scrim partners. Like who, who's going to outscale who knowing that they get to uh, scrim those certain teams? It'll be interesting for sure. Goon, any, uh, any last thoughts here on this match today? 
uh it was awesome it was fun to watch you know obviously very explosive we didn't really like this was the result that that i anticipated for sure the next match is going to be more challenging and i think it's a better indication of where we are uh, uh relative to the other teams and it's a very important series to 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 win uh, but also just to mo to play well in um mm. so uh looking looking forward to that that's where the uh, rubber meets the road for sure yeah rob's just in chat saying that they managed to scrim some eu teams a bit but less as as of now and that's 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 what we before ccl started obviously we could fit some scrims in with them on weekends like saturdays and sundays but now games are on saturdays and sundays and by the time the games are over it's it's usually a bit late for them um yeah. so yeah um goon what's your what's your hopes for for wild heart this season this is a, a new roster new players here where are you hoping to go from here do you have expectations are you just going to be happy if, if they have a fun good season not necessarily you know yeah kick every team's butt <laughs> No, kick every team's ass. I don't just destroy them. <laughs> Absolutely obliterate everybody that you can. Please, please do that. Especially Granite. Um, but uh, <laughs> uh, but no, obviously having fun is, is, is important. Winning and, and having fun and working together and keeping you know a positive mindset all the way through. I'm hoping for some good memes. I'm already seeing the memes flowing in now from the uh, team comms. Oh, they're so good. Uh, um seeing seeing some good stuff and just you know i want to i want all of our character and personality to be out there i want people to be inspired by our mm -hmm. play um by who we are as wild heart and look to emulate that in their own lives and in their own play so that's what i'm looking forward to um i would say keep an eye out this week for the uh, on the wild heart youtube channel because salvaje and i are going to be putting together a weekly show uh, I guess I can announce that it's going to be called the Wild Report. We'll be covering, you know, CCL matches from the weekend, any, uh, you know, here's the storm news or things that we're seeing said about teams and orgs and, and all of that, um, as well as uh, getting to know a bit of the Wild Heart crew, whether that be team uh, players on CCL or, you know, people involved in the org as like team managers, uh, maybe ceos <laughs> uh so that should be dro <laughs> that should be dropping on tuesday at some point um but uh keep an eye on that we also have a uh halo watch party on wednesday if you want to check that out that's at 6 30 or 6 p.m it's at 8 or i'm sorry 9 30 p.m eastern 6 30 yeah. p.m pacific yeah. so if you're into that you can check that out and again wild heart plays again saturday uh, second match of the game, so they should be starting sometime around 4 p.m. Eastern, uh, 1 p.m. Pacific, if you guys want to catch that next weekend. Uh, should be a good matchup. I feel like the Wild Heart um, Oxygen matchup will give us a better idea of how the NAEU teams are going to be stacking up, because I think they're both kind of like more of a mid-tier team. Not many people are ranking them best team in the league, more like the third, fourth, fifth slot. So kind of will be interesting to see how those... Uh, that kind of like middle of the pack teams face off against each other. Wild Heart's number one in my heart though, of course. Absolutely. <laughs> Regardless of power rankings from everyone. <laughs> the power rankings, <laughs> they're interesting. <laughs> I love them because people always like to underestimate us. You know, and that's that's just the story of my life and I'm sure plenty of other people's lives that are associated, that are part of Wild Heart and mm -hmm. uh, and just that's been our story every season everyone we're just like whatever we're kind of just there right and that's yeah. okay um it makes for better storylines better content uh and it's just life is wild it's exciting so uh, it's very meaningful for for us when we take these these dubs and, and perform very well mm -hmm. rob says that wildheart should make top four this season we got one believer. We got more yes. than one believer, let's be honest. We got, yeah, we got plenty. We got plenty. That's They're not the ones making the power rankings, but we got some <laughs> believers out there. Uh, well, any last thoughts here before we wrap it up? I'm going to call oh, this it a, is, a day here. This was fun, and I look forward to doing this more often. Uh, tell your friends, hey, if you, you want some slightly biased Heroes of the Storm casting, uh, Come check out over here at Jazzy, uh, Jazzy's channel. We'll hopefully we can do this again. Yeah, um, I, I always enjoy casting with you. And uh, no, yeah, I'm excited for the season. Um, make sure you guys check out the Wild Heart 
Twitter at Wild Heart Esport, uh, wildheartesports.com. We do have the, the Wild Heart pregame pre RSVP up. What's the pregame? What are you talking about, Goon? It is, um, we're having a, a little a little party, a little mixer. Uh, the, the evening before the CCL land starts on Friday, come out, uh, you know, just going to be at a, at a place in the Mall of America. You can grab some food, grab some drinks. It's going to be, be hanging it's out. It's not just any place. It's called the Fair on Four. It's on the fourth floor of the Mall of America. There you go. They have go-karts. They have axe throwing. You can get all of your, like, fair food that, uh, is there as well as a bar to drink at. Um, and you're going to see a lot of familiar faces, especially the Wild Heart crew. I think all of, like, our admin team, like Goon, myself, Salvaje, Dudettes are all going to be there. Uh, I know that there's just some of our community members that are going to be there as well. And people have already started to RSVP to this pregame that we're doing. This is August mm -hmm. 4th at the, uh, the the Thursday before the, the CCL matches in the finals. It doesn't matter if Wildheart makes it there or not. If they do all the better they'll they'll all be there if if we do hopefully mm -hmm. um but even if even if we don't qualify we're still going to be there regardless hosting this party for you guys have you some have something outside of just watching the matches for you guys to look forward to so i hope you rsv i hope to see you there i hope you show up and, and we have a good time all getting to meet each other in person for the first Absolutely. time for most people yeah. i think yeah. that'd be cool i've been working with with this wild heart crew for quite a while now but i've never actually met any of them in person it's all just been discord calls so yeah, I'm actually a hologram. Uh, <laughs> Goon's not real. <laughs> I'm not real. You actually don't see me. I'm part of your imagination. Uh, let's see. Uh, I think we're going to end it off here. So we'll see if there's uh, someone we can send you guys on over to to end off the day. I want a smaller streamer. Does anybody have any recommendations? I don't recognize anyone on right now. Let's take Is a look. Haven still streaming? Did he stream uh, today? He did. He did. Let me remove Let's the see. English filter. There he is. Okay, I'll, I'll read Haven. All right, do it, do it, do it. Yeah. Yeah, we'll send you on over to Haven. Yeah, congratulate him on the win. Drop him a follow. He uh, He's a Korean streamer, so he does stream in Korean, but uh, still really really great tank player to watch i know i've been in there watching him uh his positioning his plays and stuff i think he's gonna get into some storm league right now it actually looks like he might be playing on oh no he's playing on na yeah he's, he's just an playing NA gamer yeah yeah he's playing on na actually some of our uh some of our uh Academy players are in his lobby right now. Rev's on the enemy team, so you can go in there, cheer him on. In it's his... a nice lobby. Yeah, <laughs> you can cheer him on in his storm play games. Jun's in there. Who else is in there? Well, Felipe. Wishing, epic, <laughs> epic player, player. Felipe. Oh, wishing, June. yeah. Hunter. These are yeah. a lot of uh, familiar names. So go go to your Haven on, drop him a follow, have a fantastic rest of your day. Um, we're going to take off. I have cho Sunday's chores day for me. So I was like, Scott, I'm going to go cast, so don't do any of the cleaning, then I can help. <laughs> Maybe he did it all already, though. We'll see. That would be sweet. <laughs> <laughs> I hope not. It makes me feel bad when he does that. He's usually up way before me. And hey, he's... listen, <laughs> you you deserve it. It's Mother's Day. You got two fur babies. You got to take care of all the time. I have four. And, uh, the true, actually, yeah. true. Yeah. I don't. I don't. I don't count that as a Mother's Day thing. I think oh, it's, a little, it's a little cringy to be like, I have animals. I'm a mom. <laughs> no, take it all right it's, we're it's going true. over to haven have a good day guys <laughs> thanks for hanging out i really appreciate Peace you tuning out. in here bye bye bye